County Council is coming to you live from the Council Chambers and this is the Public Affairs presentation of the Metro Nashville Network. Good evening everyone, I'm Pat Nolan, your announcer for this program. Tonight the 15th Metropolitan Council holds its fourth business meeting of this new term. The meeting has a 16-page agenda with about four pages of resolutions, four pages of first reading bills, only about two or three pages of second reading bills, and about four pages of third reading ordinances. Perhaps the most important item before the council tonight is a multi-year plan to raise water sewer rates in Nashville. It is Bill BL 2019-45. The ordinance on second, is on second reading. It's been almost a decade since rates increased in Nashville. The state of Tennessee has become quite concerned about that. Last Wednesday night, State Comptroller Justin Wilson came to these very council chambers to demand immediate action by the end of the year to raise rates because the city water sewer department, as he said, is in so much red, it is going down the drain. At least one council member at large, Steve Clover, wants to raise those rates 5% more than what this bill talks about doing in the first year. We'll see how that goes. He's not going to offer it as an amendment tonight, but may offer it on third reading when it comes up. If it passes tonight, it'll be on third reading in two weeks. The bill that's before them tonight does outline high rate hikes of 3 to 4% every year from 2020 to 2024, with further rates of 2 to 3% each year after that, depending on the rise in the consumer price, consumer price index. After the bill passes, future increases for the water sewer rates would not, would, would not be subject to future count for the council approvals. Now, that's another area that Councilman Glover is looking at and may be offering some amendments again. Again, it's rare that a bill is made amendable on third reading, but this one will be made amendable on third reading in two weeks. Water sewer is one of several areas the state wants Metro to get its financial affairs in order or face a possible state takeover. That's rather rare, but it is allowed under the state to take under state law to, for, for the state to take over the financial um, affairs of a community if they are out of order. Mayors make dozens of appointments to the various boards and commissions during their term. Mayor, Cooper is, Mayor John Cooper is, is poised to make an early impact on the MDHA board as he announced the appointment of um, former Mayor Bill Purcell to the board prior to that. Prior to that tonight, the council is expected to uh, confirm the nomination of Dr. Paulette Coleman to also to the board of the MDHA. That's the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency. She is the founding chair of the Nashville Organized for Action and Hope group, NOAA, as well as the chair of its affordable housing board. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Now, Mayor Purcell, as far as I know, would be the first former mayor to serve on one of the boards and commissions after leaving office. None of the people that serve on these boards and commissions receives any compensation, but they do provide a lot of great wisdom and expertise for the city on various areas. Getting back to tonight's agenda, Mayor Cooper recently announced he wants to relocate, reallocate $18 million approved by an earlier council to build the controversial pedestrian bridge connecting the Sobro and the Gulf neighborhoods, the Gulch neighborhoods downtown. The mayor thinks the money will be better used for neighborhood infrastructure projects in several different council districts for traffic calming, bikeways, trash carts, and streetlights. While most of these projects are permissible uses under what the council approved before, about a million dollars under two resolutions tonight will be reallocated. Uh, the two uh, resolutions involved are RS 2019-99 and RS 2019-100. Now, the council staff office has been advised the administration plans to submit further legislation in the first meeting of December when the council meets again next month to reallocate the remainder of the $18 million. That's being done in the interest of full transparency. There are a couple of ordinances on second reading that speak to the water and sewer issue. They require regular uh, financial information be sent to the council uh, on a regular basis, whether it comes from the state or comes from water and sewer. They also want to get any information about property appraisals if Metro plans to purchase or own or lease or sell some real property. The bills also seek to establish ongoing council oversight over the water and sewer department and require regular information, including an annual financial report from that agency that it comes to the council each year. Those are bill numbers BL 2019-43, BL 2019-46, and BL 2019-42. Also on second reading tonight is an ordinance that authorizes a property tax exemption for historic properties owned by charitable institutions in accordance with state law. To qualify, the historic property must be on the National Register of Historic Places and several other things that they also have to meet. The tax exemption would be valid for a 10-year period, but they can be renewed beyond that. On third reading tonight, the council will be asked to join a state program that provides tax abatements for improvements done to historic properties. The program will be under review of the Metro Historic Zoning Commission. The bill number is BL 2019-3. It may be deferred for any of some additional guidelines a council member wants to have in place uh, before the bill is passed on final reading. Also in the area of property tax assistance, the council will consider on third and final reading tonight an ordinance BL 2019-33. 
It adjusts under state law the income eligibility for low-income residents for property tax relief. The new maximum income level for relief will now be $29,860 a year. That's up from $29,270 this year. To apply for that program, you should contact the Metro Trustee's Office. The bill that would ban aerial advertising in Nashville has been deferred indefinitely. There appears to be federal legislation that's pending that may do many of the things that Councilman Kobe Sledge, who sponsored the bill, wants to do. So it looks like at this point he's probably going to defer that indefinitely and see what happens in Washington. The bill that's pending up there is co-sponsored by both Senators Alexander and Blackburn from here in Tennessee. The council will also tonight approve a resolution honoring a African-American Nashville suffragist who helped uh, Tennessee assure getting being the the 36th and final state needed to ratify the 19th Amendment some 100 years ago almost. It will be 100 years next year. Uh, there's also a Metro Park that was dedicated in the honor of Juno Frankie Sir Say Pierce uh, last week, so uh, she'll have a Metro Council resolution to go along with that. Uh, there, are, there are, for the first time this term, we have six different people who've come tonight to ask to speak to the council. There is a public speaking opportunity for people to come if they ask in advance to speak to the council and that's being happened tonight for six people on various topics uh, if, by the way if you want to follow the meeting you can go to the metro nashville.gov website you can find the council agenda you can find the uh, also the analysis of the council bills tonight i've also given you the numbers for that bill because you can find those on the agenda and therefore and we put them on the screen when they're up for debate so you can find out where we are in the agenda and follow along Let's go down to Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. He's about to gavel tonight's meeting to order. Did you meet Mr. Neal? I did not. I'm John oh, Cooper, it's very nice to have you. So this is what you're going to bang, okay. but I'll tell you when. Am I ready? So can I have um, everybody's attention? Thank you. So um, it is my honor tonight uh, to hand over the gavel to begin the meeting to Jerry Neal, who is standing behind me on my right. Mr. Neal was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1921. 1921. He served this country during World War II as a combat fighter pilot, including flying into France on D-Day. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and five Air Medals. He's had a very successful business career and now is a retired mentor with SCORE. His wife, Cam, is here with him tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Neal. So um, will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, November 19th, 2019. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Elder George Acklin, the Associate Pastor of Hills Tabernacle Primitive Baptist Church, who is a guest of Council Member Jennifer Gamble. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here to lead you in this devotion. Amen. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3 and 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I commend this, this body of people who have come together to serve an awesome people because it's an awesome job. I may not get back here again, but I want to say this, that I appreciate it, 
and I thank you for all that you do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all that you do. Please bless this assembly of men and women and all that they do individually and collectively to serve their city, their communities, and their God. This we humbly pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So you all may be seated, and um, I am going to let Mr. Neal take my seat and make some comments. Mr. Neal? Thank you. All yours. I wear this hat so you know how old I am. <laughs> Actually, I moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 1962. I thought I was, I was with Honeywell and I was moving about every three years and a promotion later. But I love this place, so here I am. Met this beautiful lady over here, and we have a wonderful home. Two kids, four grandchildren. It's a wonderful city. When I arrived here, it was ditches, no street lights, no restaurants, nothing. Look at it now. It's wonderful. So thank you, everybody here, for this wonderful job that you're doing. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and be with you tonight. Thank you. So I, I think we probably should just adjourn the meeting now, okay? <clears throat> okay. So without objection, we will suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting? We've got a motion and a proper second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No messages from the mayor. All right, so before we get to elections and confirmations, there's a couple of um, things that we need to mention. First of all, it's my understanding that um, Troop 92 is here, Boy Scout Troop 92 from the Woodmont Christian Church. If you all will please stand up so you can be recognized. Um, we also have, um, and we will do this for any um, a candidate of a major office that shows up here, uh, James Mackler is here. Mr. Mackler, if you'll stand up, running for the United States Senate. Um, and then um, I am going to... Um, Call on Council Member Porterfield. You're recognized. Uh, thank you so much, Vice Chair. Um, this week, the city of Nashville suffered um, a great loss. A beautiful 12 year old child is no longer with us. So um, I wanted to share a message with families and to ask our parents to hold your children a little bit closer tonight and to remind them of how much they're loved. And tonight, after you love on them tomorrow, remind them that their words have consequences. Remind them of the impact of bullying. And please talk to them about what can be done um, if they are having um, certain thoughts and if they're not uh, able to deal with um, things such as bullying. If, if they're going through some things, please remind them that they have someone that they can talk to um, it is, in fact, a tragedy, and, and no 12-year-old should um, have to be in this position. So uh, I'm asking that we just take a moment of silence to honor her. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Um, so, um, two other announcements. Uh, one is um, I would like to remind um, the members of the Council that on December the 11th, which is a Wednesday, uh, at 4.30 p.m., um, the uh, Finance Director, uh, Kevin Crumpo, is going to be um, making a report to the Budget Committee and to all members of the Council. I would recommend that um, everyone put that on their calendar. Uh, we will remind you at the next Council meeting, but that's an important meeting that I think everyone should try to attend. December the 11th at 4.30 p.m., that's a Wednesday afternoon. Um, I also understand that uh, today is uh, Representative, uh, Representative Council Member Brandon uh, Taylor's birthday. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe he was born in 1921, but, um, but happy birthday, Council Member. I'm glad you decided to share your birthday with all of us. All right. Do you have anything to say before I go on? It's an honor to serve on my birthday today in Nashville. Thank you all for enjoying it with me and celebrating. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to take a moment of personal privilege since we're doing so many great birthdays and things. Yesterday was my grandmother's 101st birthday. So um, I just want to <laughs> express to her our, our greetings. Um, she grew up in Williamson County, one of 10 children. Uh, moved to Nashville um, and uh, has lived in this area most of her life. So with that, thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Uh, one last announcement or one last thing that we need to do. Um, indicated at the last Council meeting that there is one vacancy on the Industrial Development Board. Uh, that position is to be filled by this body. At the last meeting, we said that we would take nominations. So tonight, we do take nominations to fill that one vacancy, again, for the Industrial Development Board. Um, I will say that upon being nominated, individuals will receive an email from the clerk's office about the necessity of filing different forms. Uh, and those individuals will need to appear before the Rules Committee on Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019, the next council meeting. So uh, we are now open for nominations to fill the one vacancy on the Industrial Development Board. Um, so Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'd like to nominate Andy Bakta. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Winifred Forrester. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda. You're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to nominate Chris Murphy. Okay. Chris Murphy? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to nominate Jeff Wilson, please. Okay. All right. Uh, any other nominations? So I've got Andy Bakta, uh, Winnie Forrester, uh, Chris Murphy, and Jeff Wilson. All right, so those will be the four nominees for the position on the Industrial Development Board. Again, um, there will be a note sent out by the clerk's office uh, indicating what forms need to be filled out, and then those four individuals will need to complete the forms and then uh, appear before the Rules Committee on December 3rd. Uh, and at that meeting, after that meeting, depending on who's been confirmed or um, uh, approved through the Rules Committee process, then we will vote on the floor that night to fill the one vacancy. All right, so we're now on to elections and confirmations. Uh, I will call on Council Member Rosenberg from a report from the Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for the Hospital Authority, we consider the appointment of Ms. Anna Jean O'Neill for term expiring September 6, 2024. Approve seven in favor, none against, and move approval. Okay, so I got a motion to approve Ms. Anna Jean O'Neill for a position on the Hospital Authority, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay. Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. For the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency, appointment of Dr. Paulette Coleman for term expiring November 5th, 2022. Uh, Dr. Coleman filling the unexpired term of Mr. Ralph Mosley. Voted eight in favor, none against, to move approval. Okay, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. Uh, Dr. Paulette Coleman is approved for the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency. Well, nobody applauded for Ms. O'Neill when she got elected for the other. There you go. <laughs> So typically we hold our applause to the end, but that's okay. Um, Councilman Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Coleman's in District 35, so I understand the enthusiasm. I understand. Uh, for the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission, uh, the reappointment of Ms. Kaki Frizix Warren for term expiring September 17th, 2024. We voted to defer eight or none against and move the deferral. Okay, so it's a motion to defer one meeting, properly seconded. All in favor say aye. No, uh, that's deferred one meeting. Okay, Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. For Public Administrator, uh, the reappointment of Ms. Peggy Mathis for a term expiring December 31st, 2023. Uh, eight in favor, none against, and move approval. Okay, I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Councilmember Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. And last and not le but not least, uh, the reappointment of Mr. Michael M. Castellaran for a term expiring December 31st, 2023. Eight in favor, none against, and move approval. So I got a motion to approve. This is Mike Castellaran for the public trustee's position. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, so um, we have uh, four people that have been approved tonight to serve various roles. And if you would, uh, if you would stand up when I call your name so that we can appropriately recognize you. Ms. Anna Jean O'Neill for the Hospital Authority. Uh, Dr. Paulette Coleman for the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency. Uh, Peg Ms. Peggy Mathis for Public Administrator. And Mr. Mike Castellarin for the Public Trustee. Thank you all for agreeing to serve. We very much appreciate your efforts on behalf of the <laughs> All right, so um, we have one matter to take up also uh, based out of the Rules Committee. Councilmember Rosenberg, I'm going to recognize you for a report on the, the uh, permanent rules. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Rules Committee, with input from a lot of interested council members um, and um, a lot of our, the folks who help this council operate, uh, considered a series of uh, rules changes for our permanent rules of procedure. Uh, those, there are two versions of the rules on everyone's desk. Uh, one version is our temporary rules that's redlined. Uh, the other is a clean version where the only difference between that and the redlined version as they're in a different order and then rule number references in there are, uh, are um, noted. Um, the rules committee voted eight nothing in favor of these changes and they'll be considered by the full council at our next council meeting. So uh, thank you, council member. So again, uh, take a look at the rules uh, as they are uh, marked uh, on your desk. Uh, we will have discussion on that at the full council meeting at the next meeting. So these have been approved by the rules committee. These are for the permanent rules that will govern this body for the next um, almost four years. All right. Um, so we now move to uh, the public comment period. This is a time dedicated to allow members of the general public who have registered in advance uh, to discuss issues relevant to Nashville and Davidson County. 
We have, it's my understanding, four individuals tonight who have signed up. So if you would please come forward when I call your name and you will have two minutes to address the body. Again, we have four members. Let me again remind you, particularly Pastor Fuzz, that we have two minutes, okay? We have two minutes and we're gonna keep a close eye on the time. So our first speaker is Mr. Kevin Warner uh, from District 19, uh, 1028B, 18th Avenue South. He wants us to speak about the Blue Ribbon Commission. Uh, Mr. Warner, you're recognized. There you go. Uh, thank you. That's, uh, you guys call it Music Row, I call it Airbnb Row, but that's a different issue. Congratulations to new and returning council members. And congratulations to the Blue Ribbon Commission for finding $20 million in savings, which will help the budget if enacted. I love the report's introduction. Quote, Metro government can continue to serve the public while protecting taxpayer resources. Unquote. I love this. Serve the public, protect tax revenues. Also from the report, Quote, tax resources allocated to tourism should be re-examined in light of services rendered. Unquote. Why? Quote, the popularity of Nashville's many tourist attractions, is that coming through? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Um, especially Lower Broadway has strained the resources of police, fire, public works, and metro transit. Unquote. That means that out-of-towners should pay more for the services they use, not taxpayers. Fortunately, the mayor got the convention center to help pay for more of this. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, the convention center, for your $12 million donation. Short-term rentals. Quote, the codes department is tasked with enforcing the short-term rental permit system. This places enormous burden on codes straining resources needed to attend to other needs of Nashville residents, unquote. Those benefiting from their business interests should pay for their increased demand on city resources, not the general taxpayer. Is there a clock somewhere? Anyway, so please, I encourage all of you, please use the Blue Ribbon Report to improve the budget. In a recent poll this year, 70% of voters said that smart spending is better than raising taxes. You can do it. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Um, our next person up is Mr. Richard Forberg, um, District 24, 258 Cherokee Station Drive, talking about community-oriented transportation. Mr. Forberg. Yes, thank you. I'm encouraged by our new mayor and his team and this new council that Nashville may develop a viable plan for transportation services and infrastructure this year. After the failure of the public transit referendum last year, many people remain concerned that we are ill-prepared to create more and better options for commuting to work or just getting around town, besides driving ourselves alone. With parking spots disappearing and filling up faster, Many people are turning to their mobile phone to order a ride. That is great. But there, if there is just one commuter in the car, that is no different than driving yourself. It won't save anything but the parking problem. It won't solve anything but the parking problem. And it won't save you any money if your commute is long or if you still think you just might need to keep that car for some other reason. We need solutions, a wide variety of them, working together in a system that both encourages and enables more commuters and others to use travel options that have more passengers per vehicle at almost any time of day that they need it. Call these carpools, van pools, shared rides, or public transit, but no single one of those can do the job alone. To make this happen and make all those work together well and to grow it and make it last, we are probably going to need some bills to get passed by this Metro Council. I don't know what those bills should look like, and of course, the focus will be on the plan coming from the mayor's office. But I would love to engage with some of you directly who are also very interested in these kinds of solutions, solutions that do not require raising billions in taxes and spending tens of billions on infrastructure that would not be useful until 15 years later. 
We are also going to need HOV lanes that work well and make commuters and make commutes faster for three or more people per vehicle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Forberg. Our next uh, speaker is Chandra Sims, 3297 Hinkle Drive out of District 1, speaking about education. Ms. Sims. I am here to expound on my experience with my 15-year-old son who attends Metro National Public School System. In September, I realized there was a problem with my son's schooling. I checked Infinite Campus that, and had seen that he had dropped three to four of his classes since the beginning of school. I was concerned that he was not putting forth his best effort. He discussed with me that his classes were dropped because there were no teachers available for those courses. In his current classes, there were still issues. There was a shortage of well-qualified teachers. Most of the classes are taught by substitute teachers. The Spanish sub could not even speak Spanish. There was no homework assigned to students until the month of September. There was a sub for math, and he explained to me that he was learning seventh grade level math. Um, he's in 10th grade. A guidance counselor came by his class and she stated that the curriculum for math and science would be available online and they had to the end of the semester to finish. On September the 25th, we had a meeting with the principal and the guidance counselor to discuss these issues with the classes. I learned that they hired a full-time Spanish teacher, but the principal stated to ignore his 50 F that everybody received in the classroom because it was by mistake. But I assured you that they didn't have a Spanish teacher at the time that he got the 50 F and I assure you he was not doing any homework. Are they giving grades based on attendance? They are, they found a retired teacher to teach math, so things were better now, the principal stated. And also the principal was surprised in his first class, which is weightlifting, that the sub wasn't even showing up and that the students were either going to the gym or the auditorium. And there was a high school staff that would periodically check on the students to see if they were all right. I was devastated to learn that my son was not properly being prepared for college or the workforce. Thank you, Ms. Sims. Um, last speaker tonight is uh, Pastor Enoch Fuzz, uh, District 21, 903 33rd Avenue North, speaking on the school and the budget crisis. Pastor Good Fuzz. evening. And to my council member, Brandon Taylor, <coughs> to many of you who are acquaintances and kind of like peers and related and family and become friends like Steve Glover, can you imagine how different you would be and you become a friend of Steve Glover. And that means, but we, we work with one another, but that's what this city can become because our schools, like a previous speaker said, are failing. And I'm coming really just for me, not for some organization, not for some community, but me as an individual, I'm a stakeholder who because the school down the street have a 90% failure rate, it impacts me. Because the university is declining, that impacts me. Because every day, people don't have anywhere to live, twice a day. I can't even take all the calls, the people who don't have, who need to go to the doctor, who don't have access to care for the little kid who committed suicide. That's happening all the time. And parents talking about, there are no teachers at the school. How in the world Vice Mayor, can you not have four or five teachers at the same high school? How can you be short 75 teachers for my children? That impacts me. Those are my little children who are in my church, and I see them coming, making straight A's. From kindergarten to seventh grade, they made A's and B's, and in the seventh grade, they're reading at a second grade level, and we know what the answer is. You don't need any more listening sessions We've got good people at the at central office. Those women out there are brilliant. They're educated. They're scientists. You need to listen to them. They say we just do the policy. We carry it out. We don't make it. We need to ask them to put together a successful school system for this city. God bless you, and thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Pastor Fuzz. All right, so we're now on um, resolutions on public hearing. We only have one tonight. Um, so as typical, what we'll do is we'll call up the resolution. 
refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing, then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the measure, show of hands for those who are here in opposition. If anyone in favor wishes to speak, I ask you to come forward, introduce yourself, give us your address, and then you'll have three minutes in which to speak. Then I ask if anyone opposed wishes to speak. After that process, I will close the public hearing and refer back to the sponsor. So the first resolution, the only resolution up to on a public hearing is resolution RS 2019-89 by Council Member Parker. Uh, resolution exempting the Southern Frenchman doing business as once upon a time in France restaurant located at 1102 Gallatin Avenue from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit pursuant to section 7.08. 0.090E of the Metropolitan Code. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, so I'm going to open up the uh, public hearing, show of hands of those who are here in support of the measure. Show of, hands, show of hands of those who are in opposition to the measure. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. Uh, Vice Mayor, this may be a little late, but could I get committee reports? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, committee reports, public safety, Council Member Pulley. Public safety recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against. Okay. Back to you, Council Member Parker. I think I'd move for approval. Okay. So I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member. All right. So we're now on bills on consent. Uh, uh, of Resolutions on consent um, and also those resolutions that are not on consent. So if you will look at your uh, schedule, your agenda, I believe that there are only three measures that are going to come off consent. So uh, instead of reading all the ones that are on consent, I'm just going to tell you which ones are being pulled off and then you can let me know if anything else needs to come off. Resolution RS 2019-85 by Virtue and Porterfield. Um, that one comes off. Resolution RS 2019-100 by Council Members Mendes and Hancock. Uh, that comes off the uh, consent agenda. And Resolution RS 2019-103 by Murphy and Henderson. Um, that comes off the agenda as well. Uh, did I miss anything? All All right, so um, let me go through these things. Resolution RS 2019-83 by Van Rees, Benedict, and Bradford. Resolution requesting participation in the Tennessee Logo Sign Programs. These are all bills on the consent agenda. Resolution RS 2019-90 by Council Member Mendez. A resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Andrea Neal against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $100,000, said amount to be paid out of the self-insured li liability fund. Resolution RS 2019-91 by Mendes, Hurt, and others. Resolution approving Amendment 2 to a grant contract for the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to improve the health of those residing in or visiting Davidson County through targeted strategies to prevent and control the use of tobacco products. RS 2019-92 by Mendes, Hurt, and Welsh. Resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide viral hepatitis program services aimed at prevention, testing, diagnosis, surveillance, and leakage to treatment and other support services. Resolution RS 2019-93, Hurt, Welsh, and Hancock. Resolution approving Amendment 1 to a contract between the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the National Academy of Medicine to provide access to the Charisma Salus database system for patient and prescription tracking. Resolution RS 2019-94, Hurt and Welsh. Resolution approving a contract for services by and between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and TriStar Centennial Medical Center to make available to potentially eligible individuals information about women, infants, and children. That's the WIC program benefits and how to apply for those benefits. Resolution RS 2019-95 by Hurt, Welsh, and Hancock. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the University of Tennessee College of Nursing to provide clinical experience opportunities for its students enrolled in graduate and undergraduate nursing programs. RS 2019-96 by Hurt and Welsh. A resolution approving an agreement to detail for the Public Health Associate Program between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropol Metropolitan Board of Health, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to provide an associate 
to assist public health agencies in developing, implementing, and evaluating public health programs. Resolution RS 2019-97 by Mendes Hurt and others. A resolution accepting an opioid overdose reduction program grant from the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs to the Metropolitan Government, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health, to address prescription drug and opioid misuse, save lives, reduce crime through a comprehensive and collaborative approach. Resolution RS 2019-98 by Councilmember Mendez, Pulley, and others. Resolution accepting a Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, acting by and through the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department, to improve the delivery of and access to mental health and wellness services for law enforcement by developing and training a regional network of peer supporters among law enforcement agencies. Resolution RS 2019-99 by Council Members Mendez and Hancock, a resolution reducing the authority of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to issue general obligation bonds pursuant to Resolution RS 2013-710, previously adopted by the Metropolitan City Council. Resolution RS 2019-101 by Murphy and Henderson, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement by and between the State of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Public Works for a signal maintenance agreement for West Trinity Lane from Dickerson Pike to west of Hampton Road. Resolution RS 2019-102 by Murphy and Henderson, resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement by and between the State of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County acting by the Metropolitan Department of Public Works for signal maintenance of Brick Church Pike from log mile number 21.68 to log mile 2.340. Resolution RS 319-104 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson, a resolution authorizing Unico One Nashville Place LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 158 Fourth Avenue North. Resolution RS 319-105 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson, resolution authorizing L Flats LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1125 10th Avenue North. Resolution RS 319-106, O'Connell, Murphy and Henderson. Resolution authorizing H.G. Hill Realty Company, LLC, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1925 Broadway. Resolution RS 2019-107, Murphy and Henderson. Resolution authorizing J. Crew Group, Inc., to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 2709 12th Avenue South. Resolution RS 2019-108 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. A resolution authorizing Oliver McMillan Spectrum Emory LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 5002 Broadway. Resolution RS 2019-109 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. A resolution authorizing Smile Direct Club LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 414 Union Street. Resolution RS 319-110, Van Rees, Virtue, and others. Resolution recognizing Juno Frankie C. Pierce, an African-American Nashville suffragist who worked with others to assure Tennessee would be the 36th and final state needed to ratify the 19th Amendment. Resolution RS 2019-111, Hurt and O'Connell. A resolution recognizing the naming of Cossie Gardner Senior Park, located at 1606 Jefferson Street. Resolution RS 2019-112 by Councilmember Glover. A resolution honoring the McGavick High School Marching Band on their win at the Contest of Champions. Resolution RS 2019-113 by O'Connell and Hurt. Resolution recognized in the 125th anniversary of Bethlehem Centers of Nashville. And Resolution RS 2019-114 by Councilmember Stiles. A resolution honoring Slim and Husky's Pizza uh, Beria for winning the uh, National Cheese Pizza Contest on Good Morning America. So those are the resolutions on the consent agenda. Um, so members of the public, what we do is we have a consent agenda. These are measures that have gone through the different committees and they've been approved unanimously. So we put them on a consent agenda and then I get to read them to everybody for everybody's pleasure. And now we take committee reports and then we'll determine whether we're going to approve them. So start with resolutions on the consent agenda. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Budget and Finance Committee uh, considered six matters. RS 2019-90, 91, and 92 were recommended for approval, eight in favor, zero against. And resolutions 2019-97, 98 and 99 were recommended for approval, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Codes, Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Codes Fair and Farmers Market consider resolution 2019-83 and recommended approval, 10 for zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Hurt, you're recognized for health and hospitals. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The health, hospitals, and social services voted to approve resolutions 2019-91, 
uh, 92 and 93, 4 in favor and 0 against. 94, 95, 96 were 5, 4, and 0 against. And um, 97 was 4 in favor and 1 abstention. And resolution 2019 44 was 5 in favor and 0 against. All right, Council Member Hurt, which one had the abstention on it? It was. Um, look at it again, I apologize. Is 2019 97. 97. Okay, so we'll have to bump that one off the consent agenda. Okay. 97. Just, okay, so just everybody regarding knows. Regarding opioid overdose. Yeah, resolution RS 2019 97 is bumped from the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Hurd. That's what we needed. Uh, Council Member Murphy, you're recognized for uh, planning and zoning. Thank you. We've got resolution. Uh, 2019 101, 102, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, all voted for approval, 14 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Pulley, Public Safety. Public Safety recommended RS 2019 98 for approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Henderson, Public Works. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Public Works Committee recommended approval for resolutions 2019-101, uh, 102, 101 and 102, eight in favor, zero against. Then uh, resolution 104, 105, 106, seven in favor, zero against, recommending approval. And then resolution 107, Eight in favor, zero against, recommending approval. We have two more, 108 and 109. We've got two more, I think, 108 and 109. Thank you. Resolution 108 and 109, uh, Public Works recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, Traffic and Parking. Thank you, Mr. President. We had uh, RS 2019-83. We recommended uh, five in favor, zero against. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Council Member Rosenberg, rules. Thank you, Mr. President. Rules Committee uh, voted approval on 110, 111, 112, 113, and 114. Seven in favor, none against, and a move approval of the consent agenda. All right. So remember that we took one measure off. That was Resolution RS 2019-97. Everything else besides the three that were taken off originally are, on the, uh, are, on, are all on the consent agenda. Uh, I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member Rosenberg. So we're now back on resolution RS 2019 85 by Council Member Vircher in Porterfield. This is a resolution requesting the Metropolitan Planning Commission and the Metropolitan Planning Department to amend the adopted subdivision regulations of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to prohibit the creation of new private streets and require all new streets created as a part of the subdivision planning process to be public rights of way. Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Chair. Committee reports, please. Planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. Motion was to defer one meeting, 14 in favor, zero against. All right, back to you, Councilmember Porterfield. Thank you. I move to defer two meetings. Okay, so there's a motion to defer two meetings. Properly seconded. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, motion to defer two meetings is adopted. Uh, we're now on resolution RS 2019 97. Uh, by Council Members Mendes, Hurt, and others. This is a resolution accepting an opioid overdose reduction program grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health, to address prescription drug and opioid misuse, save lives, and reduce crime through a comprehensive and collaborative approach. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Do we need to do the committee reports again? Uh, yeah. All right, so budget and finance recommended approval, 10 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Hurt, Health and Hospitals. Um, 
This is uh, 97. Th this is 97. Mm -hmm. So the Health Hospitals and Social Services Committee, Social Services Committee voted four in favor and one abstention. Okay. Move approval. Okay. So Councilor Mendes uh, moves approval, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? All right. Since this uh, had an abstention, we're on the board. We're on resolution RS 2019-97. For those of you in the audience, what happens is on a resolution that has either a negative vote or an abstention coming, we go on the board. That's a rule. So um, we are on resolution RS 2019-97. Madam Clerk, you ready to take a vote? Is the board ready to go? Yes. Okay. So uh, open up the machines. Members, we are voting on resolution RS 2019-97. Have a problem? I don't know. It's the thing about the display. We're good. Oh, okay. All right, Madam Clerk, if you would close the machines and take the vote. Thirty-nine in favor and none against. No abstentions. All right. So RS 2019-97 prevails. Uh, next measure is resolution RS 2019-100 by Council Members Mendes and Hancock. Initial resolution determining to issue general obligation bonds of the metropolitan government in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $1 million. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. This was uh, recommended for approval by Budget and Finance, 10 in favor, zero against, and I'd like to move to defer one meeting with the explanation. Okay, so the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded, back to you, Council Member. All right, so um, this resolution relates to the um, funding, the reallocating the funding uh, for 18 million from the pedestrian bridge. And um, this resolution would have taken uh, 1 million of the 18 million and reallocated it toward garbage containers and street lights. And then the administration has told us that there will be another resolution coming at our next meeting to reallocate the remaining 17 million um, to be spent on various bridges and culverts around the county. The Budget and Finance Committee, um, I didn't hear us to be objecting to the idea of how to spend this million dollars on uh, garbage containers and streetlights, uh, but the feeling was we wanted to see all 18 million together. Um, so that was the, um, the motion to defer for one meeting. Um, my encouragement is that uh, if anybody has questions about the reallocation of the 17 million, once we get the uh, legislation next week. Please, especially with the Thanksgiving holiday, um, get questions into Council Director Cooper and Budget and Finance sooner rather than later. Um, one thing that I can promise is the, um, the bridges and culverts will not be spread evenly around the county. Um, there's a geographical component where, especially with Districts 1 and 3 being so big, there's going to be, I know, an overemphasis there. I'm hoping that we don't play um, uh, district hunger games with this reallocation and uh, if it's uh, reasonably close to fair and reasonable that we go ahead and get the money uh, spent uh, for the needed bridge and culvert improvements and with that I'd renew the motion to defer for one meeting. All right so we got a motion to defer again properly seconded. Could you give the committee report again we're trying to check was it a motion to approve in the committee or was it a motion to defer in the committee? I, I believe it was a motion to defer one meeting. So it was a motion to defer 10 to 0, I think, was the number. 10 to 0. Okay. If I gave that wrong, I apologize. That's okay. All right. So um, the uh, the motion is to defer one meeting. Uh, again, properly seconded. Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just one thing. I, I asked uh, Council Jamison yesterday to send me, and I don't know if it went to everyone, a list of all the culverts and bridges that needed to get worked on. And so I think that's why you got that is because I asked that. And so those are the ones that were the most emergent. So that's why, that's why you got that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just very quickly, uh, Mr. Cooper, will this come back in one bill or will this be 100 and then another to uh, uh, walk through the, the other seven, and I'll just round it, 17 million? How do you anticipate this coming back to us? Please? It'll be two resolutions, okay. this one and then another, at least one 
resolution um, that will address the other 17 million. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other comments? All right, seeing none, we are on a motion to defer one meeting. We're on resolution RS 2019-100. Uh, again, it's been properly seconded. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion to defer is adopted. Okay, we have one other measure on the uh, on resolutions. It's resolution RS 2019-103. This is on page four. Council members Murphy and Henderson. Resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement by and between the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Public Works, for the acceptance of a general maintenance agreement in connection with emergency slide repairs near mile marker 42, which is log mile 10.1 on I-24. Councilmember Murphy, you are recognized. While I would love to know about emergency slides, this is more appropriate in Council Lady Gamble's district, and I would like to yield to her. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Committee reports, please. I'll back to Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. Thank you. Uh, 14 in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Public Works Committee recommends approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Back to you, Council Member Gamble. Move for approval. So I got a motion to approve, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, oh, Council Member Nash, you're recognized. I too wondered what an emergency slide was. That, that refers to the repairs after a mudslide on the road over there. No, it's not like the thing that comes out of the airplane when it's about to crash. Yeah, no, you're good. Thank you, Council Member Nash, for that very important information. So we are on um, resolution RS 2019-103. Uh, motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any other discussion or very important information from Council Member Nash? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. All right, so we are now on uh, bills on introduction and first reading. Um, so, um, let me make sure I understand. There may be certain ones that may need to be pulled. If a measure on first reading needs to be pulled, would you, um, would you let me know? Councilmember Mendes, you're recognized. Can you pull 2019-11? Okay. Okay. Councilmember Allen, uh, for what reason? I thought I saw a late filed resolution. Do we not need to take that up? I think it's a late filed. It's a bill. bill. Yeah. It's okay. I thought the same thing too. Uh, Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I need 2978 pulled off. Okay. All right. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to pull Bill 201979. Okay. All right. So. I believe that um, the bills that have been pulled, uh, if you're looking at your agenda on page six, it's BL 2019-11 by Councilmember Mendez, uh, BL 2019-78 on page seven by Councilmember Sledge, and BL 2019-79 by Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, those three measures are pulled off of uh, bills on introduction and first reading. Uh, everything else can stay together. Can I get a motion to approve all bills on uh, first reading? So I got a, a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. We're voting on all bills except for those three on first reading. Um, seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, so we're back on BL 2019 11 by Council Member Mendes. This is um, an ordinance approving Amendment 3 to the ground lease for Rose Park between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, acting by and through the Department of Parks and Recreation and Belmont University, approving a new ground lease between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville, acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Public Education and Belmont University, for the construction and operation of an indoor batting and locker training facility. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. I'd like to defer first reading, which I believe will trigger an indefinite deferral. 
So the motion is to defer one meeting, which will trigger a indefinite referral, properly seconded. Uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. This, this is a complicated bill that has been uh, discussed by a lot of uh, different neighbors and Belmont has had several community meetings and there's been a request for uh, a number of uh, other people would like to have further community meetings and I just wanna assure people that will happen and if we can reach consensus, then we can bring this back later. This uh, doesn't mean that it goes away. It means that we, we know we need to talk more about it. We need to, need to take the pressure off to have time to do that effectively. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? So this is a motion to defer one meeting which sets up an indefinite deferral. All those in favor of the deferral one meeting say aye. aye. Opposed no, you adopt. All right, uh, BL 2019-78 by council member Sledge. This is an ordinance to amend section 17.16.070 of the Metropolitan Code to impose a minimum distance requirement for new short-term rental properties, not owner occupied from churches, schools, daycares, and parks. Council member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I need to move approval on first reading, but then defer second reading, which is the public hearing, to the first meeting in February. In February, okay. So the motion is to um, move approval on first reading and then move the public hearing to the first meeting in February? Correct. Okay, got that's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Thank you, Council Member Sledge. BL 2019-79 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend section 17.16.250 of the Metropolitan Code regarding advertisement and occupancy of a short-term rental property Owner-occupied, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Very similarly, after discussion with planning and looking at the public hearing schedule, uh, in addition to wanting this to track with BL 2019-7, um, which I've already deferred out there, I'd like to request uh, that my colleagues follow me in approving on first reading, and then we'll defer actually to the first uh, meeting in March for that public hearing. Okay. So you're going to be a different public hearing though, is that right? Right. It's, it, it will be on the public hearing that my other uh, bill okay. is on. All right. So the motion is to uh, pass on first reading and then uh, defer the public hearing until the first meeting in March. Correct. Properly seconded. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member O'Connell. Now, Council Member Allen, we do have a late filed bill. Uh, it is in your packet. Uh, it is Council Member O'Connell. You're recognized. And he's busy um, talking over there. Sorry. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for a late filed bill. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, this, uh, I apologize for this. I've been to rules and confirmation, so let's get committee report there, please. All right, so let's go to rules. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this came before rules, and there was no objection. Okay. And it looks like uh, Council Member Swope is standing up. Do you have a committee report? Hold right. on. Mm. Public entertainment there facilities. <laughs> Did you walk out? Well, I really didn't want to hear you talk, so I kept turning it off. There you go. That's okay. recognized. 740 against. All right, thank you, Council Member. We can still hear him. Can, uh, Council, Council Member Swope, you can use my mic anytime you need to. Um, Mr. President, this, uh, by way of explanation, this bill uh, is one very similar to those that we uh, considered throughout last term for uh, large special events. Sorry, I guess, let me, uh, let me move, move approval on first the, reading. You need to move oh, yeah, to suspend right. the rules. Let me suspend the rules. Okay, so there is a, uh, a motion to suspend the rules to get this matter before us. Any objections to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval to brief explanation. All right, so I got a motion to approve on first reading, uh, properly seconded. Uh, back to you, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this bill is not, not a, uh, unlike several we considered last term uh, related to large public events. It basically is focused on public safety and coordination across departments. Uh, and those who uh, remember our resolution recognizing the retirement of Terry Clements from the CVC know that they've had a key member of their staff turnover. And we got uh, this package uh, literally just a couple hours after the filing deadline. And I do apologize, and I know the CVC uh, was present to 
uh, be attendant to these bills during committees. And so uh, with an apology uh, for the lateness of it, we did obviously need to get this done before New Year's, which is why time is of the essence on this. And I would uh, request uh, uh, colleague support on this one and move approval. All right, thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. So there's a motion to approve on first reading. Uh, again, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. New Year's Eve is still alive. Thank you, Councilmember O'Connell. All right, we're now on bills on second reading. Uh, the first bill up is BL 2019-4 as amended, Councilmember Sledge. Ordinance amending chapter 6.04 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to prohibit uh, aerial advertising. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Committee reports. Uh, that would be Council Member Swope. Judge Ferris Farmers Market voted 7 4 0 against the fur indefinitely. I think. Uh, did, you, uh, did you try to do it without the microphone? Is that. Uh, I think, I I think Chairman Swope not. also is remembering his old committee and not his current committee. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Convention <laughs> Tourism and Public Entertainment Facilities. Sorry, it's what happens when you're in code for four years. <laughs> Seven four zero against. All right, hopefully that'll be the last time I have to call on Council Member Swope in this meeting. <laughs> All right, back to you, Council Member Swope. I'm going to give my committee report, which is also to defer indefinitely, 1040 against in codes, fair, and farmer's market. And I don't know if Public Works had... Public Works, do you have a comment, Council Member Henderson? Got re-referred back to you all as well. We also uh, deferred indefinitely or voted... Seven in favor, zero against. All right. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Move to defer indefinitely. The motion is to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019 30 by Council Member Murphy. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code Chapter 16.04 to restrict barbed wire and or razor wire fencing along arterials and collector roadways within the urban zoning overlay district and across reference the existing restrictions on barbed wire and or razor wire fencing along sidewalks in the urban services district. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. All right. I've got Council Member Sledge for codes. It was deferred one meeting by codes. Who's got the codes? Well, I've got codes, but I think you said <laughs> Council Member Swope, I thought. Um, so, uh, Bill 2019-30, we voted 11 4 zero against the deferred two meetings. All right. Uh, Council Member Murphy, do you want to yes. give the Public Works Committee or you want me to call on the chair? Oh, it was. Co Wait, yeah. Whoever needs to just. Thank you. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized for Public Works. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Are we on Bill 30? Uh, yeah, 2019-30. I apologize. We did two meetings on that one. Uh, yes, we um, uh, recommended uh, uh, deferring one meeting, uh, eight in favor, zero against, but we concur that we thought that was at the wish of the sponsor, so I'm sure our committee would support a deferral of two meetings. So, uh, Council Member Murphy, it's all yours. What would Thank you like you. to do? After giving um, my own reports and things like that, um, I would like to defer this to meetings. It was brought to our attention um, by one of our staff members that we might have some conflicts with Public Works. So I look forward to Public Works um, communicating with me about some potential conflicts. Thank you. All right. So is the motion to defer two meetings? Yes. Okay. So the motion is to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion about the barbed wire or the razor wire? Seeing none, uh, the motion is defer two meetings. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, BL 2019-31 by Murphy and Stiles, referred to the Codes Committee, an ordinance amending Metropolitan Code Chapter 16.04 to require a fence permit for all permanent fences to be constructed within Nashville and Davidson County. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Committee reports, please. All right. Codes. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Codes recommended approval as amended, 11 4 0 against. All right, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. With great excitement, I move for approval with the, uh, I guess I move the amendment. Uh, yeah, you need to move the amendment first. Um, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you. The amendment uh, changes the enforcement date, so Codes has time to work this out. And what is fabulous that um, Council Lady Henderson had previously been working on some codes uh, or some some information with stormwater and public works. So there will be hopefully by January 1st, a shiny new website that explains that you shouldn't be putting fences in your stormwater areas and such. 
So I appreciate uh, that work. And with that, I request approval. Okay, so again, a, a motion to approve the amendment. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion about the amendment? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment is adopted. Councilmember Murphy, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you. Move for approval. Okay, so the motion is to approve the bill as amended, uh, properly seconded. Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Just very quickly, and I don't know who to ask this question to, so I'll direct it to uh, Mr. Cooper, if I may. Are we staffed enough uh, in order to, to take on the additional, because I don't know how many permits we're talking about here, but are we staffed enough in order to accommodate this without any additional help needed in the uh, codes department or the permitting department? I think codes would have to answer that, but the sponsor may have information from them. Council Member Murphy. Thank you. Um, I should probably back up because I, I realized not everybody was in the committee. This was actually brought to me by codes and in doing some research to make sure that it was worded correctly and doing what we wanted to do, um, a number of our surrounding cities, counties, um, not just here in Tennessee, but all over have these regulations and require permits. And so again, part of the request of the amendment is to make sure that they are prepared for this. So literally you or your neighbors would just go into codes with a site plan that you could draw out yourself and they will look at it. They will also give you the like printout of this is what your fence can and can't be, kind of the guidelines and that type of situation. And then um, assuming that you are not egregiously uh, drawing a fence that you know takes over your whole block or something, they would be issuing the permit. From there, they do not expect to have inspections unless you require you request one or there is a complaint filed on your fence, which is how things happen now with fence uh, with fences is it's complaint driven. And so this way, the the way they are setting it up uh, provides uh, an insignificant increase in staff workload, and they feel it can be accommodated by the appropriate fee. All right, Councilmember Glover. All right, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, council member. All right, uh, we're now, uh, we're still uh, on 2019-31 as amended. Uh, council member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just one question. If someone, let's just say, for instance, they don't know they're out in the general services district and they got some cows and they decide to put up a fence around the area with some cows and codes comes out there and sees a fence up and there was no permit for it, are they gonna make them take it down? Council member Murphy. As previously mentioned, um, so this legislation again is complaint driven. So if they see a fence, they're not going to be uh, pulling unless it's like a, again egregiously looking like it's out of of um, compliance, which is again how our complaints are driven now. Maybe but, like if it had some barbed wire or something like that. Well, <laughs> we're getting to it. We're getting to it. You're, you're noticing a theme in my legislation this month. Um, and so additionally, there are and I. I I'd have to pull it up in our analysis. There are a number of our, our more rural uh, uh, zoning uh, districts that are excluded from this legislation. So I believe that your cows are gonna be just fine with whatever fence you so choose. My cows appreciate you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cooper, any further comment? Uh, it exempts agricultural zone districts and the R and RS80, which are the very large lot um, properties. All right, uh, Council Member Swope, you're recognized. Call the question. Previous question's been called. Uh, we're on the previous question, not on the bill. Uh, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Aye. Previous question prevails. Uh, we are on BL 2019-31 by Murphy and Stiles as amended. Um, we're, um, take it by voice vote at the first try. All those in favor of the bill as amended say aye. Opposed, no. no. All right, well, again, pursuant to the rules, this is on second reading, so we're on the board. Um, so, um, Madam Clerk, if you would. Um, you ready? Mm -hmm. Open up those machines. We're voting on BL 2019-31 as amended. Again, for people in the back, um, if a vote gets negative votes on a second reading, uh, we go on the board. So we are on the board on BL 2019-31 as amended.
Looks like all votes are in. Madam Clerk, uh, close the machines, take the vote. Um, I, I can see that one person is trying to vote and the vote hasn't registered. Say it again. Um, there's one council member that appeared to be voting but the vote didn't register. Oh, so um, council member uh, Suara, um, your vote didn't, yeah, there okay. you go. Okay. Okay, close the machines, take the vote. 27 in favor, nine against, one abstention. All right, so BL 2019-31 as amended on second reading passes. All right, we're on BL 2019-42 by Council Member Mendez, ordinance amending section 2.24.225 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding appraisal reports for the sale, purchase, lease, sublease, and or other disposition of real property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Budget and finance recommended approval, 11 favor, zero against, and I'd like to move approval on second reading. Okay, got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. This, uh, I guess, is primarily a question for the sponsor, although it might be a question for uh, potentially, I guess, planning or the administration. If if there is not, um, yeah, I guess it, it, my read on the bill and, uh, and I guess this is where I would maybe invite the sponsor to speak to this is, uh, you know, the kind of anticipated um, valuation, right? A, a prospective appraisal. Uh, you know, if it is unknown yet what future entitlements might be or even what entitlement package would be appropriate for a proposal, um, I guess I would just like the sponsor maybe to, to speak to how you would work that into this. Council Member Mendez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I, I appreciate the thoughtful question. Um, so uh, this legislation, I think um, you probably recall, came out of us getting um, what most people thought was a, a bogus um, appraisal for the fairgrounds land and, and simultaneously a fairly bogus appraisal for um, the Church Street swap. Um, and so we were worried about, in, in this legislation, about um, really wanting to know what the value was going to be after development. So uh, um, not just what it was worth now, but what it was worth to the buyer. And uh, so I think what's anticipated, if there's no known changes coming to the use of the land, um, that, that the prospective value would be the same as um, the, the current value. Um, I think that's the answer, Mr. O'Connell. Yeah, I think I guess let me see if I can get a little, uh, dig into it a little bit more. I just, so I'm, I'm thinking through the, you know, the district perspective from a rezoning basis where we have people approach us uh, repeatedly. Some people will just engage in a basic land transaction, uh, land changes hands, and it could be years before uh, something happens to it. In other cases, somebody might preemptively seek uh, an entitlement change. In some cases, somebody might seek an entitlement change uh, and then actually seek a different entitlement change based on uh, alternative financing. And so. I guess um, I, I totally understand the spirit. I'm not sure. Um, well, I, let me let me ask it this way: <laughs> if if it were the case that Metro were to dispose of land, uh, you know, and there were uh, no anticipated entitlement change, then would anything about this actually prevent successive entitlement changes by a new owner, uh, or would there be any kind of trigger of consequence related to that? Councilor Mendez? Um, uh, there wouldn't be any, th no, it's a short answer, no no change. And I've got a agreement from uh, Council Director Cooper on that one. All right. All right, uh, we are on BL 2019-42. Uh, uh, the motion is to approve on second reading. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I think that that's probably a pretty good question, and as I'm sitting here kind of digesting what, and I guess I'd like a little more clarification. So let's assume that um, it's going to be bought and nothing of any real value is going to be put on it, um, but it's it, they're, they're going to do a quick, you know, a, a, a flip around on us. Um, do we have any provisions inside of this to kind of protect Metropo the metropolitan government, uh, in order to not, uh, I hate to use the word, uh, word hoodwinked, but basically that's what, I mean, I see that there may be that possibility, and that may not be what he was asking exactly, but that's certainly what I began 
thinking about as I was listening to the question. Council Member Mendez. Sure, and I think I heard his question um, differently, but I think both concerns are legitimate. I, I, th I heard his question to be, well, if, if there's a completely appropriate sale today and nobody thinks there's gonna be a change so they don't do the prospective value, and then three years later, something different happens, are they, is that new buyer gonna be prohibited from taking action? I think the answer is clearly no. And your question um, is uh, substantially more cynical. Um, I just <laughs> which, think, it's, but, but I fair. think it's realistic. Um, but, but fair, and uh, I would say that uh, if the appraisal that Metro gets um, doesn't identify that it's flip worthy and there's um, uh, uh, extra value to be had, um, then no, there wouldn't be anything to prohibit it. To me, um, we'd be, and I've, I've talked to the property management folks about who they use for appraisals. Um, if, if a property is flip worthy in a very short period of time, it ought to be picked up on appraisal. If it's flip worthy hypothetically in the future, even a year or so down the road, um, then um, the value today is the value today. And if somebody flips it a year or two in the future, you know, God bless capitalism. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we're on uh, BL 2019-42. Motion is to approve, again, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, BL 2019-43 by Mendez, Toombs, and others. This is an ordinance to amend Chapter 5.04 of the Metropolitan Code to require sort of certain financial communications from the State of Tennessee to be submitted to the Metropolitan Council. Council Member Mendez. So um, there was a mix-up about a letter to one of the committees, and I need to um, ask to suspend the rules to have this be considered. Okay, do you want to get, uh, we'll get the committee reports. Sure, budget Just and finance so. recommended approval, lever in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Roberts, personnel. I would be the committee that had a little bit of confusion with the letter and um, it was deferred by rule, but I do believe there was a letter sent. Okay, so uh, Council Member Mendez, back to you for uh, request on suspension of the rules. So g given the mix up on the letter, I would like to ask to move to suspend the rules. All right, did it go before rules? Did not go before the rules? So. Um, there apparently was some confusion about the letter getting to um, personnel committee. May, it may have been there, maybe it wasn't. Okay, so the request is to suspend the rules to get the measure in front even though we don't have a committee report from personnel. Is that right? Any objection with suspension of the rules to get this matter before us? All right, seeing none, Councilmember Mendes, you're on your bill. All right, um, there is an amendment in the package that I'd like to move with an explanation. All right, so the uh, motion is to uh, amend, uh, move the amendment properly seconded back to Councilmember Mendes for an explanation. Um, so this, this bill is one of our um, post comptroller, uh, post water rate um, uh, transparency measures. Um, this is the bill that would make it so um, uh, the executive branch, any department, the mayor's office, finance, water, um, if they get communications from the state of Tennessee um, about the reflecting on the finances of Metro, the copy has to go to the council. Um, the amendment addresses a concern that we got from uh, finance that there is a um, pretty heavy um, uh, set of communications that are very ordinary from the state and uh, we wanted to try to exclude the ordinary communications. So the amendment makes it so we exclude um, any communications about grants and grant requests. It makes it so um, all the, the remaining uh, financial communications go to the council director for review and um, uh, communications that quote, reflect negatively on Metro's finances will go to the council director and the council directly and there's a five, six line definition of what that means to reflect negatively. We basically tried to look back of uh, what we know now um, was received by the executive branch over the last couple years and tried to make it so this definition would trigger that we'd get notice directly also. Um, and with that, I've got the, the motion to amend. All right, so the motion is to amend, properly seconded. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I would just, I'm here to rise in support of this. Uh, the, for those who were unable to attend the joint committee meeting of budget and finance and public works the other night, uh, one of the most striking moments was when the comptroller's office uh, 
made very plain that they had communicated to mayoral administrations things that uh, they were anticipating that we would somehow have, I guess, intuited. Uh, you know, I think we could not have foreseen uh, some of their concerns without direct communication. We also heard that night uh, from Metro Water that they were advised uh, against reporting these things to council. So tonight we are doing a few things that are important uh, for accountability, and I, I applaud this measure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, council member. Any other comments? So we're voting on the amendment that describes um, how to negatively reflect on things, correct? All right, so um, that's the amendment, uh, properly seconded. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt, we're back on your bill as amended. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. Move approval of the bill as amended. All right, so we got a bill um, as amended. We're on BL 2019-43 as amended. Um, <coughs> motion is to approve. Again, properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. BL 2019-44 by council members Hurt and Welsh. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code Chapter 10.16 to modernize the existing ordinance and authorize the Director of Health to initiate disease control measures for any reportable communicable disease as defined by the Tennessee Department of Health or any notifiable infectious disease as defined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Councilmember Hart, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee voted five in favor and zero against. And with that, I move for approval. Okay, thank you, Councilmember. There's a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. BL 2019-45 by Council Members Mendez, Henderson, and Glover. Ordinance amending sections 15220 .030, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .040, .
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, thank you, <laughs> Councilmember Mendez. BL 2019-46, Mendez, Syracuse, and others. Ordinance amending chapters 15.32 and 15.44 of the Metropolitan Code to require the Department of Water and Sewer Services to submit annual reports to the Metropolitan Council. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Budget and Finance recommended a one meeting deferral 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Public Works also recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. Approval or deferral? Apologize. Um, public works on Bill 46. Yeah, 46. We had a letter to approve. Um, okay. Okay. No problem. Just checking. Okay. All right. Thank you, Councilman Mendez. You're recognized. I'd like to move to defer one meeting with a brief explanation. All right, so the motion is defer one meeting, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilmember Mendez. All right, so this is another piece of our um, post water rate news transparency. And so this would require um, a detailed annual written report from the Water Department and also a visit to the Council for a joint committee meeting with Budget and Finance and Public Works. Um, an idea uh, came from Councilman Glover. Um, uh, out of the Budget and Finance Committee meeting to add to the reporting um, that at least for the first uh, couple years of the new rates that we get a semi-annual um, report about how the implementation of the water rates is going. And so we're going to amend to add that um, at the next meeting. So with that, defer, move to defer one meeting. Okay. So the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The motion to defer is adopted. BL 2019-49 by Council Member Syracuse and O'Connell. Ordinance authorizing a property tax exemption for historic properties owned by charitable institutions in accordance with Tennessee Code Annotated Section 67-5-222. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Budget and Finance, Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. The committee recommended deferral for two meetings, 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for a two-meeting deferral. I got a motion to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Defer two meetings. Uh, BL 2019 50 by Council Member Murphy. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Property or his designee to transfer to Bonnie Small, Administrator of the Estate of Sylvia Rose Barish, via the attached quick claim deeds. Any remaining interest in the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County may have in a certain parcel of property located at 264 Whitebridge Pike, 262 Whitebridge Pike, and 5540. Oakmont Circle, Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Uh, I believe that's the plan, yours. Yeah, the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee voted to defer two meetings, 14 in favor, zero against. And with that, I would like to defer at two meetings in the hopes that someone will give me more information about this legislation. All right, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. The motion is to defer two meetings, uh, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Okay, so uh, the next um, seven bills we can actually take on a consent calendar. Um, so let me go through them, um, make sure that no one needs to bump any of these. BL 2019 51 by Council Members Mendes, Roberts, and others. BL 2019 52, Murphy, Henderson, and O'Connell. Uh, 2019 53, Syracuse, Mendes, and others. 2019 54, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. 2019-55, Murphy, Murphy and Henderson, BL 2019-56, Syracuse, Murphy and Henderson, and BL 2019-57, Sledge, Murphy and others. Those can be all taken on the consent calendar unless someone wants to bump them. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm actually wondering if it'd be possible to bring back Councilmember Bednay to do items like this when we do these. Um, so there's a motion second, but Councilmember Bettany, uh, former council member, is not here. He was here before. He is now gone. So uh, just in the future. In the future, we will request council members Bettany's appearance for these things. All right. So uh, BL 2019-51, Mendes, Roberts, and others. Ordinance approving the transfer of the franchise rights held by Access Fiber Group, Inc. to Crown Castle Fiber, LLC. 
BL 2019-52, Murphy, Henderson, and O'Connell, ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and Alexander Line layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by changing the name of a portion of Spencer Avenue to Foundry Drive, BL 2019-53, Syracuse, Mendes, and others. Well, I guess we're through for the night. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's very quick. Ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain rights of way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for use in public projects of the Metropolitan Government, initially for purposes of the Public Works Department, project number 2018-R-009, Lebanon Pike Sidewalk Improvements, Bill 2019-54, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing easement rights for former alley number 140 and a half, former alley number 141 and a half, and former alley number 142, located at 629 and 635 7th Avenue South. BL 2019-55, Murphy and Henderson, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon an existing sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manhole, and easements for property located at 5001 Charlotte Avenue, BL 2019-56, Syracuse, Murphy and Henderson, Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new public water and sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrant assemblies, and easements for 54 properties located at Donald Donaldson Hills Drive, Lebanon Pike, and Mill Creek Meadow Drive, and BL 2019-57, Sledge Murphy and others. An ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon existing public water and sanitary sewer mains and easements to raise existing sanitary sewer manhole rims and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at 1501 Hillside Avenue. Those are the bills on second reading consent. Anything needs to be bumped? Seeing none, I'm going to ask for committee reports, budget and finance. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. BL 2019-51 and-53 were both recommended for approval, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Hurt, Health and Hospitals. Let's see, that's already been handled, I believe. Yeah, so you're good, and she's not here, so that's all right. Uh, personnel, uh, Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. BL-2019-51 voted five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Murphy, um, Planning and Zoning. We voted 14 in favor, zero against, all of the above. All right, thank you. Council Member Henderson, you recognize for Public Works. Thank you, Vice Mayor. For bills uh, 51 and 52, Public Works recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against. Uh, for bills 53, 54, and 55, we recommended approval, seven in favor, zero against. And for bills 56 and 57, we recommended approval, eight in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized for traffic and parking. Thank you, Mr. President. We had a single bill, uh, Bill 2019-1552, which we recommended for approval, five in favor, zero again. All right, and can I get a motion to approve all those bills on consent? I, I would move approval. Thank you very much. I got a motion to approve all those bills on the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. No, you adopt. We are now on bills on third reading. BL 2019-3 by Council Member Syracuse, Murphy, and others. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code Chapters 5.20 and 17.40, authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to come under the provisions of TCA Section 67-5-218, establishing a historic property review board empowered to abate property taxes relating to certain improvements on, or restorations made to historic properties. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Okay, Budget and Finance, Council Member Mendez. That was um, the committee recommended deferral for two meetings, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Planning and Zoning, Council Member Murphy. We also voted to defer 12, uh, 14 in favor, zero. All right, back to you, Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just a couple things to work out on these, so I appreciate the time and move to uh, defer two meetings. Thank you. All right, so the motion is to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Defer two meetings. BL 2019-6 by Council Member Henderson. 
an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding the waiting period, revocation of a short-term rental property permit. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, colleagues, I shared with you last time my intent to um, amend this bill or, or substitute it, and you do uh, see the uh, proposed substitute in your packet, but I am not going to move that at this time. Um, and I apologize, Vice Mayor, my out of order. I guess I should have moved. You could ask for the committee reports, but you're okay. 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 Um, uh, why don't I request committee reports, please? All right. Planning and zoning, Councilmember Murphy. One moment, please. Oh, we deferred one meeting, 12, 14 in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member that, Henderson. That was correct. We did not take action on the substitute. Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I am going to move to defer uh, uh, one meeting um, with a brief explanation, please. Um, and to get. Uh, back to you, Council Member Henderson, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, the substitute that you see in your packet, I'm going to amend uh, further in response uh, to some concerns wherein uh, what I would propose is that uh, operating uh, without a permit at all initially uh, will remain uh, as a, a, a mandatory uh, one year per the zoning administrator. Um, but for those uh, who have failed to renew um, I would propose that that be changed to six months um, in response to some concerns um, as well. Colleagues had some questions. Uh, there is a 30-day grace period for everyone, and uh, folks do receive a notice from the codes department. Um, so I think that addresses some concerns, um, perhaps in a few emails that you have received. So I just wanted to speak to my intent um, uh, for, for the public record um, and bring uh, an updated substitute to reflect those changes and with that, um, I would renew uh, my motion, or rather, I guess maybe make my motion, because I feel like I'm out of order here, um, to defer one meeting. All right, so the motion is to defer one meeting, <laughs> properly seconded. Uh, any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, we're on the deferral motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion to defer one meeting is adopted. BL 2019-12, as amended, Council Members Mendez, Hager, and others, all committee reports are in. Ordinance approving a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County through the Parks and Recreation Board and the Sports Authority for a community ice hockey and skating recreation complex located at One Bellevue Place. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. There you go. All committee reports are in. Move approval. All right. So motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Okay, so I, I did hear a no, so we're, uh, we have to go back and vote on the board. Okay, so we're on BL 2019 12 as amended. This is by Council Members Mendez, Hager, and others. Uh, again, when we have a no vote on third, we go to the board. Um, Madam Clerk? Can you open up the machines? Yeah, I, it just takes a second. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, open up the machines. We are voting on BL 2019-12 as amended. Looks like all votes are in. Madam Clerk. Close machines, take the vote. 37 in favor, one against. All right. Um, BL 2019-12, uh, as amended, passes on third reading. 
All right, BL 2019-22 by Council Member Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from IR to MUG zoning for property located at 365 Great Circle Road at the northern terminus of Athens Way. It's 5.0 acres. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report. Uh, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. 14 in favor, zero against. Okay, back to you, Council Member Toombs. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. BL 2019-23 by Council Member Roten. Uh, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing a portion of a commercial plan unit development overlay district for properties located at 4021 and 4033 Mills Road, approximately 260 feet west of Old Hickory Boulevard. Council Member Roten, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Murphy. Twelve in favor, zero, zero, or 14 in favor, zero again. All right, Council Member Roten, you're move, recognized. Move approval. Got a motion to approve. This is BL 2019-23. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. If you're following along, we're on page 14 of the agenda, BL 2019-24, by Council Member Van Rees. An ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by amending a specific plan for a portion of property located at 204 Ben Allen Road, approximately 190 feet east of Morningside Drive Zone SP. It's 4.18 acres to permit 19 multifamily residential units. Council Member Van Reese, you're recognized. Committee report. Council Member Murphy, planning Four and zoning. 14 in favor, zero again. Council Member Van Reese, you're recognized. Well, with all committee reports in, I move approval. All right, so there's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. BL 2019-25 by Council Member Roberts. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by amending a portion of a specific plan for properties located at 54th Avenue North, unnumbered at the current terminus of 54th Avenue North, 11.33 acres to permit up to 361 multifamily residential units and to allow a maximum of, of four stores in Zone 1 and 2. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. 14 in favor, zero against. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. I'd like to move for approval, please. Motion is to approve. This is BL 2019-25 on third reading. Motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-26 by Council Member Hager. Uh, ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from MUN to SP zoning for properties located at 101 Pitts Avenue and Pitts Avenue unnumbered at the corner of Pitts Avenue and Old Hickory <coughs> Boulevard. It's 4.37 4 acres to permit a self service storage unit. unit. Uh, Council Member Hager, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, all the reports are in. I would move up for approval. I think we've got, it says that it's got referred to planning and zoning. Do you have a report, Council Member Murphy? I do. It was before our committee today, and it Sorry passed 14 in favor, zero against. All right. So, uh, Council Member Hager, you're recognized for the mistake, and you can now move on third reading. Well, I've, I've been called down for mistakes uh, I understand. before. Council Member. Many time in court. Move for <laughs> approval. <laughs> got a motion to approve, 2019-26, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. No, you adopt. Bill 2019-27 by Council Member Roberts. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from IR to SP zoning for properties located at 5800 Centennial Boulevard and 1720 61st Avenue North, approximately 430 feet west of Ohio Avenue. It's 6.15 acres to permit up to 300 multifamily residential units. Council <coughs> Member Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. 14 in favor, zero against. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. I'd like to move for approval, please. All right, so the motion is to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-28 by Council Member Mendez. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from R6 to RM15A zoning for property located at 807 and 811 Watts Lane, approximately 175 feet west of Watts Terrace, 1.42 acres. Councilmember Mendes, you're recognized. Committee report, please. Councilmember Murphy, planning and zoning. 
I know you're shocked, but 14 in favor, zero against. All right, Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. Move approval. Got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Council Member Roberts, you're recognized. I'd like to be uh, shown as abstaining, please. Okay. Uh, without objection, we'll just note that for the record that you're going to abstain. Okay. All right, so we are on BL 2019-28 by Council Member Mendes. Uh, we're going to show a record of abstention by Council Member Roberts. Uh, the motion is to approve. It's been properly seconded. What, so we have to go on the machine? All right, so we're, uh, we're going to have to go on the board for the abstention. So, okay, so um, we are on BL 2019-28 by Council Member Mendez. Again, just for those who are watching, uh, because we have an abstention on, on Rule 3, on, on the rules, we actually have to go on the board for the abstention because we can't do it apparently by the machine. Uh, or we can't do it, the machine won't allow us just to take it by voice vote. So uh, we are on BL 2019-28. Uh, we are on a motion to approve. Madam Clerk, if you would, open up the machines. Everybody voted who wanted to vote? We are voting on BL 2019-28. Okay. Madam Clerk, uh, close machines, take the vote. 35 in favor, one abstention. All right, thank you. So BL 2019-28 passes. BL 2019-29 by Council Member O'Connell. Ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from CS and R6 to MULA zoning for properties located at 506 and 508 Fifth Street and 1708 Pearl Street at the northwest corner of 17th Avenue North and Pearl Street, which is 1.31 acres. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Uh, get a committee yeah. report. Sorry, let me get a committee report. Councilmember Murphy, what you got? 14 in favor, zero against. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Well, now I'd like to move approval. Thank you. Okay, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? We're on 2019 29. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of BL 2019 29 on third reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019 33 by Council Members Mendez, Hancock, and others. This is an ordinance amending BL 2019 1626. Establishing a program for the purpose of providing assistance to low-income elderly residents of the Metropolitan Government for the fiscal year 2019-2020. Councilmember Mendez, you're recognized. All the committee reports are in. Move approval. All right. Get a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019-34 by Syracuse, Murphy, and others. All the reports are in, all committee reports are in. An ordinance approving an amendment to an existing conservation easement and accepting a temporary construction easement to be used in connection with the development of the Opry Mills Connector Greenway. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019 36 by Council Members Taylor and Murphy. All committee reports are in. Ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning alley number 691 right of way in Eastman. Uh, birthday boy, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Thank you, Council Member. We're now on page 16 of the agenda. Uh, BL 2019-37 by Council Member Sledge and Murphy. Uh, all the committee reports are in. An ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County by abandoning alley number 402 right of way. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Member, approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. 
Bill 2019-38 by Councilmember O'Connell and Murphy. All committee reports are in. Ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by banding a portion of alley number 413 right of way and easement. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval. Got a motion to approve on third. This is Bill 2019-38. Motion to approve properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Bill 2019-39 by Council Members Benedict and Murphy. All committee reports are in. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of National Days and County to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Stratford Avenue Stormwater Improvement Project for 21 properties located along Stratford Avenue, McChesney Avenue, Gallatin Pike, and Catherine Street. Council Member Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. With all committee reports in, I move approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. This is on third reading. Bill 2019-39, um, no one in the queue. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Bill 2019-40, Council Member Hager and Murphy. All committee reports are in. This is an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon the existing public water main and easements and to accept new public water, new public sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and a fire hydrant assembly and easements Property located at 910 Robinson Road. Council Member Hager, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval, please. Got a motion, got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2019 41 by Council Members Taylor and Murphy. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County to abandon the existing easement rights located between Felicia Street to alley number 945, formerly known as 30th Avenue North. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve on third reading, properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> Opposed, no. Bill 2019-41 is adopted. Council Member O'Connell, for what reason? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This is a point of personal privilege. I know uh, Council Member Poley is heading toward the exit, but he did get a chance to meet uh, top-ranked uh, quarterback Joe Burrow this past weekend. <laughs> I think... The planning table might have uh, something we wanted to show on the big screen. I think a fan actually caught some footage of this moment. So would everybody take a look at the screen? <laughs> so we, we do thank Councilmember Pulley for his service. We are also very glad that he is okay. So, Council Member Pulley, before you get out the door, you're recognized. At Council Member Swope's desk, do you want to say anything? Hold on. They didn't show me getting up. <laughs> I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Second, we stand adjourned. And so the council has concluded about an hour and 50 minute meeting. That's right, less than two hours. That's the shortest one so far of this term and perhaps the shortest one in a while. They went through about a uh, 16 page agenda and pretty, pretty routinely. I think one of the reasons it was short was because of the most significant action of the night. The council approved without much debate, just a minor amendment on second reading of a multi-year bill that would, um, that would raise water sewer rates over a number of different years. Uh, you might remember that state officials came down here and sort of read the riot act to the council members and other members of the uh, administration down here that uh, had been many years since it, the water sewer rates had been raised and they felt the department and some other, other aspects of the city's finances had the city going down the drain i think the council members got that uh, got the got the, their attention was gotten by that presentation they approved it tonight without any changes there may be some additional conversation about this on third reading council councilman at large steve glover wants to uh, put in a, an additional five percent increase in the rates in the first year and this he may also make some changes for the latter years of it maybe having to come back to the council which right now it would not have to do going forward if this bill is passed so we'll see what happens the bill again passes on second reading tonight without dissent and comes back again for third and final reading the first meeting of december on december 3rd the council also um uh, approved the nomination for the MDHA board of Dr. Paulette Good Coleman to the Metropolitan Board of Ho Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency. She is the founding chair of the Nashville Organized for Action and Hope Group, NOAA. 
She's also the chair of its affordable housing subcommittee or task force. The mayor makes a lot of appointments like this during the year to various boards and commission. He's also poised to make another appointment to the MDHA board. That will be former mayor Bill Purcell. He'll be coming up here for consideration to go on that board probably at the next council meeting again on December 3rd. It'll be the first time in anyone's memory that a, a former mayor has actually been asked to serve on a board of commission after leaving office. These posts are non-paying jobs, and, but they are a great source of both wisdom and expertise for the government. That'll certainly be the case uh, for Mayor Purcell. Mayor Cooper wants to reallocate about $18 million that an earlier council approved to build the, a controversial pedestrian bridge connecting the Sobro and Gulch neighborhoods downtown. The mayor thinks that money will be better used spending it for several infrastructure projects in a number of council districts for traffic calming, bikeways, tra trash carts, and streetlights. Uh, the council was ready to act on that tonight, but decided it would be better to wait till another amendment comes in that not only reallocates the million dollars, but the entire $18 million. I don't think there's any opposition about doing it. They just want to have it all done at one time. Uh, the council also passed a number of different uh, measures tonight on second reading that would give them more information about water and sewer and also about other communications they get in the future from the state, particularly that are, criti that are, that are critical of, of, of Metro's operations. That bills are on second reading, so they'll be back here for a third reading. There were a couple of them that were deferred tonight, but I think the council's in a, in a mind for both, for both uh, transparency and for accountability. They want to pass these things to make sure they get information. Some of the council members were a little concerned that they got blamed in some way for what happened on water and sewer, but frankly, particularly for the new ones, they had no idea this was a problem until they got here. Some of the ones who'd been here longer perhaps should have, man, but they'd have to almost by osmosis because it does appear the previous administrations did not let them know what was going on. The, the council um, deferred a bill that would have given a property tax exemption for historic properties, that's for further study, and also did the same thing for joining a state program that would uh, allow tax abatements for improvements done to historic properties. Again, I think that's more for study than it is for actual opposition, but we'll wait and see what happens when it comes up again in the future. In the area of tax property tax assistance, the council did approve on third and final reading an ordinance that adjusts, that adjusts under state law the income eligibility for low-income residents for property tax relief. The new maximum income level will be $29,860. If you think you might be eligible for that, you should contact the Metro Trustee's office for more information and to apply for the job or to apply for the, uh, the, the help on the tax assistance. The council is now in recess until the first Tuesday in December. That's December 3rd. We'll be here to provide live coverage. Until then, may you all have a happy Thanksgiving holiday, and we'll see you back here next time. Good night. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.